Good evening and welcome to the Wednesday night prayer meeting of Lakewood Baptist Temple. I'm glad that you have decided to join us live stream tonight and we pray that the service is a blessing to you. I pray that you had a great Resurrection Sunday weekend and you were able to spend time with your family and do some fun things uh, with them. And what a blessing. Praise the Lord for the weather that we've been having uh, lately. I believe that's an answer to prayer because I believe uh, for us to get past all this coronavirus stuff, we need some warm weather and we need some sunshine, especially up here in the uh, dreary Northwest. And God's been good to us, hasn't he? And uh, there, there are so many reasons to give God praise and, uh, and, th- and, and be thankful for. And I hope that you'll do that uh, tonight, that uh, you will uh, d- just, uh, just have a, a spirit of, of praise and thankfulness as we sing and uh, as we uh, give honor and glory to God through the singing, through the preaching, all of that. We, we are, are uh, listening or joining together in the service tonight for a reason. And, uh, and one of the things I wanted to say uh, is last, last Sunday night I made the statement that uh, we, uh, we, we are not editing the preaching times of, of these services. Uh, we, we don't want you to think that. Last Sunday evening we had the camera and the, uh, the, the uh, sound drop out and so we had to stop and, and start again a couple of times during the message. And so I wanted you to know we're not editing anything out. Uh, what, whatever happens in the message happens in the message. And so we're not trying to improve or anything, add or take away from the messages. Uh, we want them to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. So if you should see that in the... Uh, coming messages and the coming services. Just know that, that we're not editing uh, any any of those things. If it does have a break in it, it's because we the the video or sound failed uh, because uh, there's there's bugs that uh, and issues that happen sometimes in the uh, elect, uh, electronics and with the media and uh, and and so anyhow. Uh, hopefully that you will be understanding about that. But we're going to have a great service tonight. So let's have a word of prayer and ask God to meet with us at this time. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you, Lord, for being willing to not only save us, but meet with your people. I pray tonight that we'd be attentive. I know many have worked and are tired, and I pray that they would uh, be upbeat and encouraged and, and strengthened and uplifted right now to uh, have expectation of what you might do in the services. Lord, we pray that you'd bless the singing. We pray that you'd bless the giving. And then most importantly, the preaching of your word. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and every believer to, to have ears to hear as the word is preached. Uh, bless our prayer time this evening. And Lord, would you meet with us in a special way, a way that only you can, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Jeff is going to come and lead us in a couple of songs. So let's stand and let's get ready and let's sing it out unto the Lord at this time. Let's sing that song. His grace is sufficient for me. On that first verse now. Many times I'm tried and tested as I try.
it will never lose its power. On that first verse now. the Lord. We have an opportunity to give right now, and so I hope that you'll prepare uh, yourself to give unto the Lord. Let's be faithful uh, to our tithes, offerings, missions, giving. Let's be faithful to that. Uh, Praise the Lord. This last Sunday, uh, we had a decent missions offering, and uh, church members, I want to challenge you. Stay faithful uh, to that, because we'll be back where we need to be in no time if you just keep up on that. And uh, so let's pray and ask the Lord to bless the offering tonight as we give. And let's be faithful to give either uh, mobile, uh, by the mobile app, uh, by mailing our tithes and offerings in, or by, by bringing it in. And uh, uh, know that the Lord will bless it if we're faithful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, God, for the opportunity to give. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you and worship you, Lord, with our tithes and offerings. Use it for your honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. get into the Word of God tonight, would you turn in your Bibles to John chapter 20, and may I remind you uh, back at home that we are uh, going through a a three-sermon series uh, titled, What the Resurrection Brings, What the Resurrection Brings, What the Resurrection Can Do for You. And, and so uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different, and we're going to jump ahead uh, in the passage of Scripture and deal with another person uh, surrounding Christ's resurrection, and uh, I want to look at him for this Wednesday night's service, and, uh, and then uh, we'll go back and we'll look at another character uh, this coming Sunday. So tonight we're going to look at the latter part of John chapter 20. And I hope that and pray that, that the subject of the resurrection does not get tired and does not get monotonous for you. Because as we established this last Sunday morning, 
Uh, the resurrection means everything to the believer. It means everything uh, to the foundation of our faith. And, and it, it is vital. It is of utmost importance. And so I felt led to do this. So turn uh, to John chapter 20. And if you'd like to stand for the reading of the word of God, you can. And uh, we're going to begin reading in verse number 19. Verse number 19. The Bible says, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side, then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus unto them, to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And this is very important for us to take note of this verse here because it keeps the context or it sets the context for the next two verses. And it says, And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, I believe this. I believe this is, is because of, of Jesus Christ having died on the cross and, uh, and resurrected for us. I believe this is when the Holy Spirit indwelt believers. Uh, and and uh, Pentecost would be when the Holy Spirit empowered the believers. And I haven't seen any, anything in Scripture that would contradict that. Uh, if you know of something, let me, let me know about that. But, but uh, Jesus breathed on them and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is our seal uh, for salvation. Uh, he, he is uh, our earnest or our earnest. Uh, so... <clears throat> um, the Holy Spirit uh, is, is, uh, is indwelling them now. And he says in verse number 23, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Now this is in the context of peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. Why was Jesus sent? And why was he sending them? And you all probably already know the answer to that question, but we, we see that in the light of this context here. So, uh, verse number 24, and this is crucial to our, to our message tonight, but Thomas, one of the twelve, called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Hence, the reason why he is uh, named or nicknamed Doubting Thomas. So verse number 26, and after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the, came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach Hither thy hand and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
The name that's just spoken about in these last few verses here. The name that is above every other name. Lord God, I pray right now by that name that you will fill me with your Holy Spirit, that you will speak to your people. God, that you would stir up a revival within us of faith. God, that you would stir up a revival and a vigor uh, within your people of the things of you and the things of your word that we would draw closer to you than we've ever been before. So when these church doors open once again, God, uh, there would be spirit-filled believers ready to spend time with you, ready to hear the word of God preached, ready to serve and ready to go out and reach a lost and dying world. And Lord, would you, would you give us revival? God, I pray that you'd help me, that you'd, you'd speak through me to your people tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can go ahead and be, go ahead and be seated if you were standing. But uh, we remember from last Sunday evening's message, uh, we've, we've looked at, at uh, John, at Peter and, and John, mainly John, and, and how uh, the resurrection uh, brought peace uh, to the disciples, and John was the example of that, and, and what a wonderful peace the resurrection brings. Because he lives, uh, we know that uh, the one that, that holds tomorrow, because he lives, all fear is gone, and you can have peace that passes all understanding because of the resurrection of our Savior because of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we've, we've looked at, at that uh, Jesus came and, and he stood in the midst of them and said, peace be unto you. And I believe John was already feeling that peace because uh, when, he, when he went into the tomb and he looked around, he was not there and he saw the folded napkin. And, and the Bible says that, that uh, he believed, that he believed and, uh, and what, what peace the resurrection brings. But I want to speak to you uh, tonight about another thing that the resurrection uh, brings. And, and uh, it's so amazing in today's day and age and, and, uh, and, and throughout history how that, that believers, because of circumstances and because of, of things that happen, uh, happen to us, because of uh, problems that we face, how that many times um, those things that, that we experience and the things, tangible things that we can see and uh, the, 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 the tangible, the pain that we can feel and the problems that we can experience, it's amazing how quickly uh, believers can be removed from trusting in God as their source of strength and as their source of, uh, of provision and as their source of hope and, and so on. And it's so amazing how that because of, of us getting our focus off, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Uh, isn't, it, isn't it sad that uh, even after the resurrection here that you still find some doubting and it would go on. You, you, can, you can read it uh, when, uh, when Jesus uh, sees and meets his disciples as they are out on the Sea of Galilee and as they're fishing. And uh, the Bible says when they, when they came to the shore that some doubted, that some doubted. There, there was even doubt after he had, he had met with them, after he had talked with them. And, and it, it is amazing how quickly that God can do something miraculous for us. And boy, it bolsters our faith for a few fleeting moments. And then another uh, situation, uh, a, 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 temp a tempestuous storm arises in our lives. And just as quickly as the faith is, is there, the faith is fleeting and it's gone. It's amazing amazing how quickly we can be shaken. Amazing how quickly we can be removed. Just as it was amazing how quickly the disciples' faith wavered and how, how quickly it was removed. By now, most likely, 
the majority or if not all of the disciples had heard that Jesus was alive, whether it was from Mary Magdalene or whether it was from John, uh, they, they had probably all heard and yet they're still doubtful and yet they are still fearful, uh, which shows us this, that no matter, uh, no matter how powerful a Christian's testimony is, if you and I are not where we should be, no matter how, how powerful their testimony could be to us, when we are not where we, where, where we should be spiritually and mentally and emotionally, and even when we're not uh, present where we should be physically, you and I can be persuaded not to believe that powerful testimony. We can be persuaded to criticize or, or to doubt or to fear a powerful testimony. And, and when we get into that position, when we get into that place, we will risk missing the blessing ourselves of what God has done for them. Because, listen, God is not a respecter of persons. What he did for the apostle Paul, he can do for you and for me. What he did for Daniel, he can do for you and me. What he did for David, he can do for you and me. What he did for Joseph, he can do for you and me. What he did for Peter and what he did uh, for John and, and all of the disciples, he can do uh, for you and me. And he can do through you and me. But many people, because... Uh, of their own, judging things based upon their own experiences and their own wisdom and their own merit. Many, many people uh, put a wall up and say, I'll not believe it unless I see the, own, the proof in, in my own life and, and miss out because they're not where they should be. Miss out on the miracles and the blessing of God, of, of experiencing the blessings that God wants us to experience. Listen, listen tonight. Uh, doubt keeps us from the best that God has for us. Doubt keeps us from the best that God has, God has for us. Have you been living in doubt? Have you been living in doubt the last couple of days? Have you been living in doubt the last several weeks or the last couple of months or maybe even longer than that? Well, Thomas is about to illustrate for us perfectly what happens to the believer when they live in doubt. And God is a loving and merciful God. And we would see that even uh, in this situation, e even though Thomas wasn't, wasn't worthy of it, even, even though Thomas did not deserve what, what the Lord Jesus was about to do for him. But Thomas, Thomas almost missed out on everything. You see, there was something special that happened for the church. But because of doubt, Thomas wasn't there to experience it. I, I hope you let that sink in, friends. Doubt plays such, a, a, such havoc. Doubt plays such havoc on Christians Doubt plays such havoc on, uh, on, on the church. And, and, uh, and you know this, listen, the church is made up of members. And it's not just uh, husbands that are members of the church. And, it's, and it is wives as well. And it's not just wives, it's husbands. And it's not just uh, husbands and wives, it's the, the children that have been saved and baptized uh, it, it is every individual, and every individual is important, and their spiritual growth is important. Where you're at spiritually, listen, uh, you, you are either being a help to your church or you're being a hindrance to, to your, your church. And, and it's important, don't, don't sit back and say, well, there are, uh, there are spiritual pillars that are in the church and they have the spiritual leadership. We have the pastor, we have the deacons, we have the, the trustees and, and let them bear the spiritual brunt and let them carry the banner and let them do the work. And, and, uh, and, and it's, it's okay uh, that, that I sit back or that I sit on the sidelines or that I sit idly by and, uh, and, and, and doesn't, it does not really matter where I'm at spiritually as long as everybody else is where they should be. It's not true. And Thomas was not 
where he should have been. The church was gathered together. I said the church was gathered together. They were all there except for Thomas. And uh, they were gathered together because of fear. But nonetheless, they were gathered together. They were in the right place. Oh, they might, not, they might not have been in the right place for the right reason, but they were still there. And may I add this? It was still Sunday. It was Sunday evening, I might add. And so, uh, they, hey, listen, when, whenever the, the church is called together, we ought to be where the church is called together. Uh, the ecclesia, the, the called out assembly, listen, and, and, and may, I, may I say this, I thank God for media, I thank God for the opportunity for us to listen to the preaching of the word of God and, uh, and for us to uh, sing songs and to the praises of the, the name, the glorious name of the Lord Jesus Christ and for us to be moved, for us to even have the technology to be able to give during this time. What a blessing. But if you think we've had church, we haven't had church. Church is a called out assembly. We're doing the best that we can right now. And we're trying to meet together on live stream even when we can't meet together. But it's not church. And when, when the doors open back up, I'll preach this every message if I have to. I'll preach this every message for the rest of the year when we get back together. When the doors open back up, some, some dads and some moms and some children uh, need to make the commitment that every time the doors are open, I'm going to be in God's house. I'm gonna, I am going to uh, come together with the called out assembly. There's a call to come to church Sunday mornings. There's a call to come to church for Sunday school and the worship service. There's a call to gather together Sunday evenings. There's a call to gather together on Wednesday nights. And, and uh, the church in the evening, Sunday evening, are gathered together we ought to take that seriously thomas for some reason well we know what it was because of doubt he wasn't there jesus came and uh, and what a what a blessing what a service that was the lord jesus christ met with them he met with them there in the midst and their fear turned into faith and, and listen when we come together the lord jesus christ meets with us here at lakewood baptist temple that's why you've maybe maybe you've tried to to uh, to, to to justify it in your in your mind as oh this is just as good being able to meet here in our house or uh, watching this live stream but if you're really honest with yourself and, and, and before God, uh, it, it, it is, there's nothing like being with God's people in God's house under the preaching of God's word, singing praises to God's name uh, with the family of God, with the family uh, it, that, that, that meets together in the sanctuary or uh, in the house of the Lord. Jesus Christ meets with us at Lakewood Baptist Temple. And, uh, and listen, he can take our problems and many times you've experienced when you come and you sit here in the chairs and you listen to the preaching that you come in one way, uh, but, but he, he took your problem and he, he turned it around and he took your problems and changed it into praise. You walk out different than you were before. And I hope, I hope that this is happening for you, that you sense God's presence there, as you listen to the preaching of the Word of God, as you listen uh, here uh, via live stream, but, but there's nothing like meeting together with God's family. We ought never, ever, 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 ever forsake that. We ought not do it. He can take our problems and turn them into praise. And... Uh, and even though the disciples didn't come together for the right reasons, they were where Christ wanted them to be. Oh, they weren't, maybe not spiritually, but physically they were in the right place. And that counts for something. Jesus had told them, comfort one another. 
Jesus had told them, uh, by, this, by, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, that ye have love one toward another. And, uh, and, and they, were, they were in the right place, maybe of the, not, not of the right heart, but they were in the right place to receive blessings, physically in the right place to receive blessings. And as I said, maybe they weren't there spiritually, but, uh, but th- at least they were there physically. And, and that ought to help us to, to remind us this, of this tonight. Even if people are not wanting to be where they should be, hey, husbands, even if your wife is not wanting to be where she should be in God's house, lead her to be in God's house anyways. Even uh, parents, even if your children are not wanting to be in God's house, lead them to be in, in God's house anyways. I, I, uh, I, I've said this, you, you heard, it's a, it's a corny preacher joke, but, but uh, 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 you're talking about when I was a child, I, I had a drug problem because I was drugged to church Sunday morning, I was drugged to church Sunday night, I was drugged to church Wednesday night, and, and, and really, honestly, I was not drugged to church because it only took me a few times of complaining to my parents, why do we have to go to church every time the doors are open? And uh, they helped me, they helped me to have the right attitude towards it because uh, the seat of understanding met the board of education. And, uh, and I got whooped if I showed a bad attitude towards going to church. And, and boy, uh, my, my attitude changed towards it. And, and I carried that even in my rebellious teenage years. I knew I better not forsake the assembling of myself together with God's people in God's house and God's place. That stayed with me. And parents, it's your responsibility to make sure that your children are in the house of the Lord. And even when they don't want to be, you, you make them be there. Why? Because even if they're not where they should be in their heart, put them and expose them to the preaching of the word of God. And it's an opportunity that God might be able to work with them. There's a story of, of a, a little boy who uh, was misbehaving and his, his parents, uh, his mom came to him and, and said, you sit down and, and be quiet and, and uh, you, you have a, you're going to have a time out. You sit down, you stay there. And the little boy said, I don't want to sit down. And the mom said, you sit down and you stay there. The little boy said, I don't want to sit down. And, uh, and finally, the, the mom said, I'm gonna, uh, if you don't sit down right now, I'm going to tell your father when he gets home and you're going to get a spanking. And uh, the little boy sat down and he looked up at his mom and, and he said, I may be sitting down on the outside, but I'm not sitting down on the inside. And listen, that's, that's how many Christians, I'm not just picking on kids, that's how many Christians come to church. Hey, I may be sitting down, or I may be doing this uh, and humoring, humoring pastor, or humor, humoring uh, our church leaders, or the church family, or humoring God on the outside, uh, but, but I'm, not, uh, I'm not going along with it on the inside. But listen, friends, at least that counts for something because whenever a person who is hard-hearted or whenever a person's not where they should be spiritually, you get them under as much preaching as they possibly can. And even if they are where they should be spiritually, you know this, that none of us have ever arrived. None of us will ever arrive as long as we're here on this earth. We need more instruction. We, we need more preaching of the word of God. We need more encouragement from our brothers and sisters in Christ. And you, you take somebody who is not where they should be uh, on the outward, but you bring them in and, and, and listen, my friends, under the preaching of the word of God, there's more hope. Where Jesus meets with his people, there's more hope of that person getting their heart right with God. And so, even if people are not wanting to be where they should be, get them there anyway. You say, wives, well, what if I have a, a husband who's, who, who, who is just hard-hearted and doesn't want to be in church? Uh, listen, hey, pray for them. And, and, uh, and don't, 
grow tired of, don't, don't be a nag and, and don't uh, try to lead your husband because that's not your position. But you can ask and you can let him know that you want him to be there and you can love on him and say, please come with me. Come, would you come to church, church with me? And, 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 and you, you can still have influence with them, even if people not wanting to be where they should be, do everything that you can to get them there. And they weren't in the right place to receive spiritual blessings. Uh, they weren't in the, uh, they, they, I'm sorry, they weren't in the right place physically, or, or I'm sorry, spiritually. I'll get it straight one of these times. They weren't in the right place spiritually, but they were in the right place physically. And Jesus took care of the spiritual part. He has a way of doing that. Have you ever been in the wrong place spiritually before you went to church that things changed as you were at church? Because these, these disciples, that's the, that's the way it was. That's the way it was. Uh, because they were faithful, that counted for something. Or because they, they at least they, they had, they said, well, we, 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 should, we should meet together to see what all this uh, all, all, all this gossip about the Savior being resurrected or, or, or all of these stories about the Savior being, being resurrected, we should at least meet together and, and, uh, and we ought to come up with a plan. What are we going to do? What are we going to do if the Jews come after us now? Uh, and, and, uh, and listen, even though they were not where they should be, have been in their hearts, they were there where they should be physically, and they experienced, number one, the blessing of his presence. Verse number 19, then the same day at evening, be, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you, and I won't preach this message all over again. But what a peace was brought to their heart because they were where they should be, and Jesus was there in the midst of them. And that's why as, as Christians, as believers, we ought to pray for every service that, that uh, our church uh, that our church observes, where our church members are going to be meeting together because we want God's presence in our midst. We want Jesus to show up, and uh, we, cannot, we, we cannot conjure up the things that we need to spiritually and we can't have the presence that we need to spiritually and we and we we shouldn't uh, uh, just trust in emotions although emotions aren't bad but we shouldn't trust in trying to manufacture something nothing can be manufactured uh, like like it can be uh, except when Jesus shows up the blessing of experiencing experiencing his presence boy what a, they, the Bible says that they were glad they saw the, the piercing in his hands. They saw uh, the, the wound in his side and they were glad because Jesus was alive. And, and what a presence that it was that came into the room that day. Can you imagine what a church service that would be like? Man, and, and we have church services like that here at Lakewood Baptist Temple. When all of a sudden where there's a choir special or, or, or Brother Jeff's song leading or uh, an offertory that's played and, and during the music service and as we go into the preaching service, you can feel, you can sense that something changes, that something is almost like it's a, you can feel it in the air. It just, it, it is God's presence. It is, it is God's power showing up. I praise the Lord for a church like that. Well, there are people who have been praying for the service. Or there are people who are wanting to meet with God. There are people who have gotten their hearts right with God. And, and we can see God uh, do something like that for us, for his people. They, they received the blessing of, uh, of his presence. And then they received the blessing of a purpose. Look at verse number 21. It says, then said Jesus unto them again, peace be unto you as my father hath sent me. Even so send I you. And even though they had been dispersed, they had been 
scattered for the last few days, and they'd, they had shown a great lack of faith. They had shown a great uh, lack of responsibility. They didn't deserve to be used by the Savior, but he shows up and, 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 and makes it very clear uh, that everything was going to be okay because he's alive and he's well, and, uh, and that even though they had failed, uh, God's plan had not failed. God's purpose for them had not failed. The plan was still going to go forward. And aren't you thankful for that, my friends? And even though we are faithless, and even though we are unfaithful to God, and even though we stumble and fall and fall flat on our faces over and over and over again, God's plan can still go forward, forward with great power and great might and great ability and great glory. And now Christ was going to pass the baton onto his men, onto his church. He says, as the Father hath sent me, even so send I you. May I say this right now, my friends, or may I ask you, what was it, the reason why Jesus came? We talked about that a couple of Sundays ago. He came to save people from their sins, and he's telling them for the same reason that I have come, the same, same purpose that you're now being given that's being passed on to you, and not that we can save people from their sins. But we can share with them a Savior who can. What a purpose. There's no greater purpose in that, of that than in all the world. The blessing of a purpose. And then third of all, the blessing of empowerment. And he says, verse number 22, When he had, had thus breathed on them, he saith unto them, Receive you the Holy Ghost. Now, uh, they, they weren't given the power like they would be given there at Pentecost, but they were given authority. They were given authority. And, uh, and, and uh, he, he will talk about that verse and when he says, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, verse number 23, Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. Talk about a church service. They came, and when they walked in those doors, they had fear in their hearts. They had doubt in their hearts. They were dismayed. They were discouraged. They were falling apart. They were a wreck. They were a ruin. But... But the Lord Jesus Christ comes in and he meets with them and all in, in one message and, and in one meeting with them, he restores the blessing of his presence. He restores the blessing of his purpose. He restores the blessing of empowerment and enablement, enablement to them. And, uh, and have you ever been in the wrong place spiritually before you came to church? But you came anyways. You didn't know why. Uh, you, you didn't know how you got out of bed that day. You didn't know how you got yourself dressed that day. You didn't know how you got your feet across the floor, made it to the vehicle and got in, uh, to the church service and boy, you had a bad attitude or you had the wrong frame of mind. You had the wrong perspective. You've been living in the mire and in, in, in the muck and, and you came in but somehow by the grace of God and the love of God and the faithfulness of God, His Holy Spirit got through to your heart and your heart was encouraged and you felt His presence and you felt in a renewed purpose and you felt a renewed empowerment by the Holy Spirit of God and you fell on your face before him and said, God, be merciful and forgive me a sinner. But when you got up and walked out of this place, you went out a different person. That's the importance of meeting. That's the importance of meeting uh, in God's house with God's people. You were blessed anyways, even though you didn't deserve it. That's happened to me so many times. It's happened to me where I've, where, where I have, man, I've been just a, a puke. Get to where my message is, is ready and pray over and ask God to help me, ask God to forgive me and get up and, and preach and the Holy Spirit bring to my mind oh, what a, what a, a, a faithless person I'd been all week. What, what a disgrace I had been all week. But in spite of that, the, the Lord uh, getting beyond, moving beyond my deficiencies, beyond my failures and using me, 
any ways, and I just have to fall on my face before the Lord and say, Oh God, I'm not worthy. Oh God, forgive me. And as we look in the context here of these verses, Jesus, Jesus gives them authority and <clears throat> and uh, we we have to look at this context. Notice he, he's already said, he's laid it out. As I mentioned earlier, peace be unto you as my Father hath sent me, even so send I you. And he says, receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathes on them and he says, whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they, they are retained. And, and uh, when, when it says uh, they are remitted and they are retained, it means they have been. They have been. It's not that you and I can have the power to forgive sins or that we have the power to uh, hold sins against anybody. What, what it means is that we have been given authority to be Christ's spokesman. That we've been given the authority. He's saying, hey, I, I'm, in, I'm coming, I have come as God in the flesh, as a re, the represent, a representative of, of God to man, the, the, the go-between, the mediator, the, the man Christ Jesus, God the Son, God in the flesh. And, and what he is, his, is saying is, uh, as I've come as an ambassador of God, he is God, but he's saying, hey, now you'll be my ambassadors. And aren't you glad that... Uh, that based on the authority of God's word and based on, uh, on what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, based upon his death, burial, and resurrection, based upon the purpose which the Father sent him and him passing on that purpose uh, to his church and, and to his followers, to, to believers. Aren't you glad that, that we can tell somebody with a surety, your sins have been forgiven. Your sins have been washed away because uh, of the, the, uh, the, the fact of them putting their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ and in him alone. At the same time, we can tell somebody, your sins are, are, uh, your sins are, are, are still, uh, the, the, you're, you're going to, you're still, you're still in bondage to the, the, the penalty of your sin uh, if you don't accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. That's the purpose that you and I have been given. That's the purpose. And we ought to take that purpose seriously. And when you've met with Jesus spent time with him and when you're faithful to God's house and you're faithful and I'm not just talking about hey there, there, there are people many many people who sit under the preaching of the word of God but they really haven't been in church for many many years because of hardness of heart towards each, either the word of God or towards the people of God or towards even the preacher of the word of God and they haven't opened their hearts to even listen with, uh, with their uh, heart uh, uh, to the, to the preacher uh, to the actual message that it, that is there, uh, and many many people are are missing out, uh, and so they don't have the prompting in their heart, they don't have the fervor in their heart to have the love for somebody and the compassion for somebody enough to tell them with love in their hearts, "Hey, Jesus Christ died for you, for your sins." But not only that, He was buried and He rose again on the third day. What a blessing, what a revival meeting these disciples had. And, 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 uh, and, and that listen, that's the result of revival is when God's people realize it's not about us anymore. It's not about what, what condition we're in or what we're getting or what we're not getting. Revival is when a church uh, falls so in love with God because of hearing the message of the word of God and they get right with him in their hearts, but then it becomes about Others, it becomes about telling the message of the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ to those who are lost and in darkness. That's what revival brings. But don't forget this. This is all taking place and Thomas was not there. Thomas had missed it. And I, I myself almost want to break down in tears when I think about this. And to be honest, 
with you. I, I myself have probably caused just as much frustration and heartache and pain to people who looked over me, who, who, who watched out for me, spiritually speaking, mentors and spiritual leaders that I'd had. But, uh, but I can look back at missions conferences that we've had and revivals that we've had. And I can look back at special meetings that, that we've had and special days where we have an anniversary Sunday or we have a resurrection Sunday or we have a, a, special, uh, a special thing for the church members to congregate and come together. And, uh, and I, so many times where the Lord Jesus Christ has showed up and met with us, times where we had a revival service and what, even though we have a, a, a 200 plus meeting membership we only had 40 or 50 people that showed up for a service and 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 yet God met with us anyways and we heard the singing of the word of God and the preaching of the word of God and boy we had a time together boy we had a time of blessing but I can't help at the same time as a pastor walk away from a service like that and think of brother so and so and sister so and so and these dear children that uh, they're responsible for and I can't help but but think oh God they missed out oh God, they missed your presence. Oh God, they missed meeting with you. Lord, help them to be more faithful in the future. And how it breaks my heart. But I can't imagine, my friends, how much, how much that must have broken our Savior's heart for Thomas not to be there. And how, how much it breaks his heart when he says, you know what, I've got something planned and I'm going to do something for you. And I'm going to meet up with you and I'm going to show you what, uh, how much I love you and, and give you some revival and give you some experience of, of meeting with me in, in my presence. How much it must break his heart to see people allow things, allow trivial Allow menial things to get in the way. And I hear people, and, and I'm thankful for, at least for the, 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 the value of this part. People say, hey, preacher, I listened to the message later on. Or I, I watched the service later on. Good message, good. And, and I, I, I say praise the Lord, but at the same time I think, but if only you'd been there. Oh, my soul. If only you had been there. You know, if only Thomas had been there. When Jesus showed up, it would have changed. It would have been different for him. But praise God, Jesus was long-suffering and patient with him. You see, doubt makes us miss blessings. Doubt makes us, it, it, is, it is a powerful thing. And it is a wicked thing. It is, it is such a weight and such a disturbance and such a distraction. Why was Thomas not there? Why, why did he not come? Listen, we can only speculate. And, and, and we could say that it's because of doubt. We can say that 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 it was because of fear that he said, I ain't going to church because, hey, listen, uh, the, those Roman soldiers uh, or, or the, the, the Sanhedrin, the, the priests, uh, they might show up and, and they, might, uh, they might arrest everybody, whatever it might have been. Maybe, maybe it was just because he had other things to do. Maybe he had uh, yard work to do. <laughs> We, uh, we can speculate all day. Maybe he had a sports game. Maybe, maybe he had uh, a, a family function. Maybe he had brunch scheduled with his family. You say, preacher, now you're just getting silly. Now you're just getting foolish. I did that for a reason. Because whatever he was doing, was not worth it. Whatever he was doing was not worth it. So, it, because so so th this this uh, eight days later, verse number twenty four, it says that but Thomas, uh, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said unto him. 
uh, they're, they're saying, Thomas, you missed it. You missed a, a great revival meeting. Thomas, you missed uh, spending time with the Savior. You missed his presence. You missed him reestablishing our purpose. Thomas, you, you missed his power. You missed uh, his empowerment. You missed all of those things. And Thomas, you can feel the, the, you can sense the guilt and the shame welling up inside of him. And, and so he discredits it all. Just like many people do. Oh, it really couldn't have been as good as, as what they say it, it was. Oh, really? I, you know, it's, to justify it in my mind, yeah, it was probably just a bunch of emotion. Yeah, it was probably just a bunch of people getting worked up about not really all that much. The other di disciple, disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the, of the nails, and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, again, the disciples were within, and Thomas with them. And Thomas just kept pushing it out away and Thomas just kept putting up the walls and Thomas just kept criticizing the experience that the disciples had had and Thomas just keeps on trying to justify his purpose, his reasonings, why he wasn't there in his own mind. Oh, you know, it, it really, it, they, they must just be making all this up uh, to make me feel bad for not having attended. And we can get so hard-hearted the same way Thomas was. But the Lord Jesus Christ, as I said, had love for, for Thomas. And, and Thomas, hey, praise the Lord, at least he shows up later to meet with the disciples. But he had already missed so much. And he was already so undeserving and he was already so, uh, such a display of doubt and, and, and it's, hey, it's stuck with him to this day, doubting Thomas. Doubting Thomas. Oh, he's not Thomas. He's doubting Thomas. It's stuck with him to this day. A scar. A mark. But, praise the Lord, Jesus intervenes. And he changes he, he changes the perception and the perspective of Thomas and the perception and perspective that we have of Thomas. The Bible says, then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, again, peace be unto you. He gave, he gave Thomas a, ch a second chance. If you're listening to the message today, and, and, uh, and I've been singing your song the Word of God's been singing your song and, and, and has been telling your story. You're saying, you know, well, is pastor just trying to guilt me into uh, to, to help, help, helping out with increasing the numbers or Sunday night attendance or Wednesday night attendance? And, you know, could it really be all that great? Have I really missed out on, on all that much? Let me say this to you. At this message that's going into your ears right now is another chance. It's another chance for you. And Jesus says to Thomas, you need your proof. Here it is, Thomas. Reach hither thy finger. Behold my hands. And reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side. And be not faithless, but believing. Thomas, your lack of faith, your lack of faith because you, you, you believed, ah, uh, Jesus, or God will be okay if I miss the coming, the gathering together. Oh, uh, God will be okay if I, if I put this thing before him. Oh, God will be okay. Uh, and, and really, I'm, am I really missing out on all that much? Lack of faith. Am I really missing out? Am I really, is, is it really that much of a detriment to me when I, when, when I don't show that, that I believe Jesus is alive by my lifestyle, by my actions? 
Is it really a detriment to me to miss the things of the Lord? Is it really a detriment to me to, to show a bad testimony? Is it really a detriment to me when I am not witnessing to people like I should be? Is it really a detriment to me when I haven't opened up my Bible in weeks? When I haven't spent time in prayer seeking God's face and walking with the Lord? Is it really a detriment to me? All of those, all of those statements show great lack of faith. And Jesus says, hey, if you need proof, here's the proof. And today, the Holy Spirit's saying to you at your, ho at your home, if you need proof, here's the proof. I'm giving you another chance. Don't be faithless, but believe. John Phillips says, the corporate testimony of the Lord's people to the reality of the Lord's presence in a meeting leaves the absentee particularly cold. Leaves that, and that, that's listen. If you're listening right now, and your first instinct is, uh, yeah, just another ploy from the pastor to try to get me there on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights, because uh, you know, there's more. There's got. There's more. There are more important things in life. There are more. Uh, I, I, they, he doesn't understand my schedule. He doesn't understand this. And and listen, that feeling that's that's welling up inside of you. It is, it is seeing uh, the testimony of others and how God's worked in them and, and all this. And basically you're saying, ah, you're embellishing. It's really, it really can't be all that great. And, and truthfully, honestly, words cannot express to you how great it is. Something that you're just going to have to do like what Jesus told Thomas. Don't be faithless. Believe. Don't be faithless. Step out by faith and believe. And when, the, when Thomas was confronted with the reality of the resurrection, Thomas finally saw the light. He finally saw the truth. And he submitted and surrendered his will and his desire. He stopped being faithless by, by the statement, my Lord and my God. I'm not going to be faithless anymore. I'm going to do things the way you want me to do them. I'm going to be faithful to your house from now on. I'm going to be faithful to do your work from now on. I'm going, to be, I'm going to be faithful to be where the presence of God is from now on. I'm going to be faithful to the purpose of God from now on. I'm going to be faithful to letting the power of God be in me from now on, taking that power seriously, depending upon that power. When he was confronted with the reality of the resurrection, he said, my Lord and my God. But Jesus says this, Thomas, and, and I, I closed the message Sunday night with this, with the same thought, he said, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. It's those people who, they don't, they don't sit in a service and look around and go, well, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll believe that this preacher is really uh, led of God if we see somebody go forward and get saved. I'll believe it if we see, uh, if, if we see that person get right with God because I know they ain't living right with God. I'll believe it if we see this happen or if we see that happen. I'll believe it if we see the numbers increase. It's just that that person, uh, and I use that as an illustration, but it can go down very many uh, different, different paths in your life or, or apply to very many different situations where you say, I'll believe it if this happens. Jesus Christ says, blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed that believe that the word of, what the Word of God says is true because God said it. They don't have the attitude of God says it, I believe it, and that settles it. They have the attitude of God says it, and that settles it. That settles it. It's true. It's true. And the, he, scripture goes on to say, and many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. I can't wait someday to know those things and to, to experience and see those things. But these, these are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And there's an invitation at the end of this passage of scripture, or the end of this chapter. Hey, you don't need to see it as, uh, for proof. You just need to believe it. Believe on the word of God. Believe, and listen, that says you might have life through his name. 
uh, we understand this, that, that eternal life doesn't begin when we get to heaven. That when you trust in Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and if you're not saved, I hope that you'll do that tonight by praying, saying, Lord God, I'm a sinner. I, I, I need you to save me. I believe that salvation is only in you. Save me and forgive me. If you'll pray something like that, he'll save you. But listen, eternal life doesn't start when we get to heaven. Eternal life for the believer is to be lived uh, from day one of salvation. And so the message is believe. Live like you believe it. There's greater blessing for us who have not seen and yet believe. We can't see him, but he's there. And, and, and you can't see that he's here in the services, but he's here. And if you believe that, hey, if we had, if we had a banner, if we did a Facebook ad, or we uh, called each and every one of our members and said, Jesus is going to show up for this service, I guarantee you, I hope, I would hope that every person would be there. Why is it that we have many services where people don't show up? Maybe... We don't really believe Jesus is going to meet with us and Jesus wants to meet with us. But the resurrection, looking at that, should give us faith. Looking at the proof that Jesus Christ is alive and well should renew our faith. Uh, and, and, and listen, we have this new life in Christ that we're to walk in. Walking with Jesus takes faith. Believe it. Yet, yeah, uh, even... Even in those times where you don't feel like picking up your Bible and reading, faith says, I'm going to do it anyways because I know I need it. Even when the in the times when you don't feel like getting on your knees and saying, God, please help me, give me renewed strength, help me today. I need to, I need to spend time with you. Oh God, would you, would you forgive me and fill me with your spirit? And Lord, here's my needs and here's my wants and, and my requests and my desires. And let me cast them at your feet. Faith says, even though I don't feel like it, I'm going to do it anyways. Faith says, even though I don't feel like going to church, even though I'm tired, I'm going to do it anyways. We have to believe that Jesus Christ is going to take us in the right direction and that, that the Lord Jesus Christ and obeying him is going to lead us to the right destination. You see, faithlessness keeps us from being where we should be. But trust says, even though I don't feel like it, I believe and therefore I'm going to act on my belief. Thomas said at first, because I don't feel like it, I'm not going to be there. Because I don't feel like it, I'm not going to show up. And boy, he missed an amazing church service. Praise the Lord, Jesus gave him another chance. And Thomas saw and he believed. But Jesus said, blessed are those that have not seen, are they that have not seen and yet have believed. The resurrection brings faith, my friends. But how many of us are living and walking in that faith? I'm going to ask the piano player to come tonight and uh, not your typical Wednesday night message, but man, we should never grow tired of hearing about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Faith brought, uh, or the resurrection brought faith to Thomas because he saw but you and I, all we have is God's word. And I say that, but that's more than enough. That's more than enough. More than enough to change the way we should live our lives. More than enough. The resurrection was more than enough for, for us to say, I, I am going to be faithful to my walk with the Lord. I am going to be faithful uh, to being in God's house. I'm going to be faithful and I'm going to have my family faithful because I do not want to miss opportunity to meet with Jesus. The resurrection brings faith to, to believe, hey, uh, I am going to be faithful to, to the calling and the purpose that God's laid on my life to tell people about the Lord. I believe that if I tell people, people will be saved. Maybe not every person, but God's going to bless. Spend time in prayer tonight, Christians. And maybe right now you would say, oh God, 
Forgive me for my faithlessness. Forgive me for my lack of faith. Increase my faith, Lord. Is your, your lifestyle and is your testimony showing that, uh, that you believe God's word and, and, and that you believe that Jesus is able to do the things that he says he is, that his word says he is? If so, your, your actions will, will speak it. The song being played right now is Great is Thy Faithfulness. God's been so faithful to us, but how have we been toward Him? Have we been faithful to Him? Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight and I ask, Lord God, that this message would just continue to work in, in people's hearts and lives. I pray that it would challenge us uh, to remain or to be more faith-filled. And uh, Lord, help us to realize that that feeling is not faith. Just because we feel like we're doing right, or just because we feel like we're doing good enough, or that we feel like we love you, Lord, the, the true test is in our actions. The, James, as, as, as James said, uh, you, we, can't, we can't show faith if we don't have works. Faith without works is dead. But Lord, if we really truly have faith, our works are going to spring forth from that. And, and uh, just as... Thomas, uh, his faith was renewed by seeing the resurrection of our Savior, or seeing the, the resurrected, resurrected Savior. Lord, if we'll take a look at you once again, the fact that you're resurrect, resurrected means that, that you can overcome any area, any doubt, any problem in our life. And, uh, and God, may that restore and renew faith in you and help us to live the life that we should. We pray that you'd bless now as we are dismissed this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, uh, I want you to continue to pray uh, for several different things as we go into our prayer time tonight. And uh, uh, we, we've had some praises come in. One of them is that, uh, that Brother Daryl Idio's sister was able to get her chemotherapy uh, treatment. And so that's a blessing. Pray. Pray that uh, the funds uh, or the, the um, financial assistance will come in for the rest of those chemotherapy treatments, for the ones that uh, are not covered yet, and uh, continue to pray for that. And Brother Tyler Prater, uh, Brother Tyler uh, gave a report, and I shared it, I believe it was Sunday, that, uh, that his uh, coronavirus uh, symptoms are subsiding, and he is feeling better. And so continue to pray for God's healing upon him and his family and uh, that, that God will uh, just, uh, just uh, keep that uh, from, from uh, hitting his parents and his wife and children uh, with, with uh, the severity that it has hit him with. Um, and not at all, uh, uh, hopefully, if they, if they haven't uh, been affected by it. Uh, also, please continue... Uh, to pray for the Tucker family with the loss of uh, their son Calvin, um, please pray for. Continue to pray for uh, Joanna tweets um, uh, for for her father, and uh, it looks like he uh, could go home to be with the Lord uh, very soon now, uh, as he has had ki kidney failure for many. Uh, many years now, and uh, it's taken a toll on him. But pray uh, that the Lord will help him to go peacefully and without pain. Uh, and and then continue to pray for Lisa Tweet. Uh, and I know a lot of these prayer requests have to do with people that I am connected to. Uh, but we we still want to pray God would heal her of her cancer and the treatments would go well. Um, so continue to pray for that uh, please continue to pray for your church that God will help us financially uh, through this time that God will help the church members uh, to stay close to him at this time that God will help 
uh, them to, to be faithful once we are able to open up the doors once again. Uh, and that, uh, that our seniors and church family members would stay uh, free and clear of the coronavirus. And God answers prayer. Amen. There's power in prayer. Uh, so let's lift these things up before the Lord tonight. And uh, this coming Sunday, we, we are going to have um, some great services. I'll be preaching in the morning. In the evening, we're going to have a special guest missionary uh, preacher uh, who's, who is just about to go to the field of Brazil, uh, Brother Michael Schmidt. And uh, he'll be here preaching for us for the Sunday night service. And so you tune in to that. And, uh, and we're, we're going to have the, the video if we're able to get that uh, hooked up. We're going to have the video for you to be able to watch their, their missions presentation. And so uh, be faithful to the services. Be faithful to watch them during the, the regular church service times. Uh, don't forget the junior church every Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Have your kids uh, ready already fed and ready to, to watch the junior ch church services. Brother Jeff is doing Sunday school services before the uh, Sunday morning services. Have your children tune into that. Teenagers, Brother Rigo is, uh, is doing uh, services for the teenagers Wednesday nights at uh, 6 p.m. So hopefully, hopefully you watch that tonight and hopefully you'll continue to watch that um, as he does those live stream uh, for our teenagers' parents, make sure that you have your teenagers watch those, and I know that it'll be a blessing to them. I want you to know as your pastor, I love you, and I'm praying for you, and there's power in prayer, and, and this is our, our midweek uh, prayer service, so let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Good night, and God bless. Mm -hmm.